We are live. Welcome to Ms. Marvel Episode 1 Thoughts. So in this episode, Kamala says, It's not the brown girls from Jersey who saved the world, which is just heartbreaking to hear her say. And the show is obviously going to be about how she comes to realize that statement doesn't have to be true. She, like anybody, can save the world. And I do really appreciate that immediately the show and Bruno starts building her back up with really supportive state comments. So in the comics, Kamala writes fan fiction. Here, instead, she's a YouTuber, which is a very logical change. And the, you know, sort of the uh, wink and a nod to people who, you know, know the comics, she's using, like, cutouts to, which, I mean, I guess that does make a certain amount of sense for her to use, but, but yeah, you know. And we open this video on a YouTube video she made about Captain Marvel, summing up some of the ending of Endgame. She talks to go about going to a con, especially for the Avengers. She's going to be dressed as Captain Marvel, obviously. Honestly, I would subscribe to what what was it called again? Sloth Baby Production, Dark Black Sloth, something like that. I'd subscribe. That that is that is a, that is such a gimme. Seriously, Marvel, just make a YouTube channel and and have her voice some animation that just yeah. And we get a really good sense of Kamala's family immediately, with her brother praying and the father being like, "You're always praying. Eat something. Just yeah." That is an impressively fast and effective failing of a driving test. And right after, her parents were so supportive of her in front of the driving teacher, but then judgmental when driving home. Okay, so I'm not a child of immigrants, but as far as I know, this is extremely common and accurate for those. Like, just, yeah, 100%. Each detail of that. And and them breaking into the their native language when, when getting really upset with the driving teacher. Yeah. Mr. Wilson was my father. Oh, he's trying so hard to be cool. I love the visuals showing Kamala's imagination at work. In that regard, this is visually the most creative Disney Plus MCU show so far. I really appreciate that each of these shows has different goals, different approach. You know, just, yeah, you know, they're talking about, oh, you know... Maybe Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel. Maybe Zombie, Captain Marvel. And each time we see, like, on the like wall behind them as they're biking, the the there be like this animation. You know, not just a drawing, but at least a little bit of animation as well as they imagine these. And something I didn't even notice. One of the one of my fellow YouTubers pointed out. You actually see. I think they get like a little sad and they feel rejected. You know, they're like, oh, this is just, yeah, that's absolutely love it. And she has to help with the wedding errands. Great montage. She's bored. And we're also getting a sense of the entire immigrant community with, you know, we're, we're seeing the food, the, the jewelry, clothes, all the stuff. I love how the adult Muslims go back and forth between speaking English and their native languages. Very true to life. And Bruno really wants Kamala to ask her mom for a ride to AdventureCon. Kamala really doesn't. And they even, like, can we stop pretending like your mom is Darth Vader? Darth Vader is over on Obi-Wan Kenobi, also here on Disney+. Plus. Just, we get it, Disney. You're, um, you know, you have... A lot of properties, and and they have they have Mr. Wilson quoting Mulan lyrics, and even call it out as that's what he's doing, and just like maybe a tad too cheeky. And uh, she asks, but tries to make it sound like a favor for Bruno, not for her. So you want to go to a party at night? Is this a joke? Is Bruno recording this for the internet? That's, that is exactly what, yeah, that, that's how ridiculous it is for her to even be asking this. And 
she does a great imp Kamala does a great impersonation of her mom when she claims that Amir gets to do whatever you know she she drags him over and he's like please don't do this and like she she tries to move his lips to to make him ask and then she impersonates her mom and she really like I don't she must have rehearsed she must have practiced this and like really because like play it back she really gets the the like the like mannerisms and and diction and and just it's a great impersonation i also really loved when she imagines that they're all sitting uh, around the dinner table like oh come on she's the best person ever. and and like her mother looks like she's been hypnotized basically and just yeah that was very brave of you not very well thought out are you still afraid of the gin which, I mean, yeah, I imagine that probably is what Muslim children are afraid of. Like, you know, we can watch the excellent movie Wishmaster, but they've probably actually been told about the djinn as, as children. And I like the bit with, you know, she's like, I'm not 12 anymore. And he picks up the stuffed animal, which is like, and it's like a sloth, because that's apparently like her favorite animal, and that's why it's baby sloth. And apparently in the comics, it's like baby, baby sloth is her her, uh, yeah, the, the name she writes under or something like, you know, he picks up, this says you're still 12. Excellent sequence of the texting using all these emojis and it's showing up on the road and the building and it's like the, the neon sign, just absolutely love it. And then her mother says she will let her go because her brother asked. <laughs> But her father has to come, and they're both going to be dressed as Hulk, which Kamala finds humiliating. And it's it's such a great, because, like, her parents really are trying to be supportive and understanding and such. And, like, they probably feel like she's growing up too fast. Like, if she was still, like, eight or nine, and her dad says, we can dress up together, and we can go to this cool thing you want to go to, you know, she would have been over the moon about this. But... She's, you know, ah, high school aged, I guess 13 or 14, something like that. Uh, I, I'm not American. So, so, you know, somewhere around there. And they feel like she's trying to be an adult. And, you know, yeah, some teenagers are in a rush to be adults. And certainly one of the most humiliating things for a teenager is if someone, especially someone with authority, especially family, think of them or refer to them as if they're still children. And Kamala feels bad. They talk on a rooftop. Bruno shows her the gloves which light up and she's really happy about that. That Those are super cool. It's too bad she, she forgets them in the bathroom. I agree with uh, Nakia, I think it's pronounced. It really looked like Zoe intended to hit Kamala with that bowl. And it's like, you know, that's a way she can bully her. If she, like, gave her a nosebleed outside of sports, she'd be in trouble. But here, she said, ah, I just got overexcited about the sport, you know. Kamala, please tell Bruno, this Zuzu is possessed by a djinn. He has to fix it. <laughs> that's such a great... And, and that's apparently like the the powers starting to manifest a little messing with the light i really love seeing kamala's plan all the little details i love that we realize like she's explaining this to him over like lunch in the cafeteria so you know the the like she's she's just talking to bruno so the the person you know she like she says afterwards i didn't even want beans but you know the, the i Either she was talking to Bruno, so the, the person was just like, okay, fine, uh, beans, here you go, you know. Or she, or or it's also possible Kamala said, no beans, please. And the worker's like, I'm being paid to serve you everything, so here you go, you know, just. But yeah, the that's supposed to be the, the emptying the spoon. I realize it looks like I'm throwing it at her. Anyway, the, the yeah. You know, she's she's explaining this to Bruno during lunch in the cafeteria and during, like, their, their, ah, what's it called? Probably also, like, during recess and all these kinds of, just, yeah. And she goes into the attic to get something Pakistani for the costume, finds the bands. And... 
and they try to go through the plan, but there are adjustments along the way. Things don't go exactly as they hope. I really quite like, you know, she, she wrote down exactly when she's leaving, and then she had to cross that out and write the other one. She jumps out and grabs the, the branch and falls down instead of, you know, she, she wants to do a perfect superhero landing like her hero, Captain Marvel, but just, you know, because that was one thing she pointed out during the, the video. She looked great doing it. You know, it's not just that Captain Marvel is a complete and utter badass. No, she looks good while doing it as well. And, you know, they end up almost missing the, the last bus they get, and she loses her bike, and just, yeah. And they don't get to jump on, you know, jump their bikes onto the tr the, the bus as she had hoped. I love all the MCU references inside the con. Immediately we hear Star Spangled Man with a plan. It also is a super cool idea. I'm guessing it's in the comic. Oh wait, no, yeah, I think in the comic it's just like a regular party for teenagers. And let's see, but, but yeah, you know, I love that the con isn't for fictional characters, but for the real life heroes, you know, and 100% if there, if the MCU heroes existed in the real world, there would be an Avengers con. You know, think about how much, you know, how crazy people go over just like people who are good at sports or celebrities. You know, imagine if like you could go and and like celebrate someone who saved fifty percent of all living beings in the entire universe. Like just. Yeah, that would be a big deal. And I'm also guessing part of the reason, you know, it serves multiple, you know, purposes. It's also a great way to remind people that, you know, Disney Plus has all of these, you know, literally not a single thing referenced in, uh, unless there's some, it's possible that there was a reference to a Spider-Man solo movie. One of the Tom Holland Spider-Man, but other than that, every single movie you see referenced right here on Disney Plus. So once you've watched the episode, why not check out one of those? You know, and the then there's also the the aspect that this really is the kind of thing that Kamala would love. There's the aspect that like there are a lot of things about Kamala that are not necessarily like. I don't want to say universal because no no one it's ridiculous that the straight white cis man is thought of as the universal the one everybody can relate to but whatever there are things about Kamala that are very specific in a way that uh, in a way that isn't normally thought of as universal but one thing that like if you're watching this show either like okay maybe you're being paid to because you're like a professional movie critic Otherwise, it's because you share her love of these heroes. So, you know, it's like, okay, you, you, you know, maybe you didn't love all the, the, ah, uh, Urdu, I think it's pronounced. Maybe you thought that some of this stuff was too specifically Muslim, too specifically Pakistani. She does technically live in Jersey, but... This is still a show for you. This is a show that loves the Avengers. Thank you for your sacrifice. They dwell on Natasha's self-sacrifice longer in this episode than they did in Endgame. Yeah, still sore about it. Amir is out for the evening. Kamala's in her room. Okay, so that was definitely not something Kamala needed to see. But I do think it's really sweet that her parents are still attracted to each other. Costume's not even accurate. I guess she went off the comics instead of the movie? Seriously, Zoe better not win after how she treated Kamala. Crap, I left in the bathroom. That is exactly where you are supposed to leave crap. Do not bring it out with you. Learned that the hard way. And Bruno forgives her for... for, for Bruno forgives her for forgetting the gloves. There we go. Right, I also, so this is to, I, I try to keep these in chronological order, but whatever. The scene where she's in the high school going through the hallway, you know, she's trying to fit in, but she's not really used to how American teenagers 
behave. So, you know, she she waves to someone because that's a friendly thing to do. And that's not something that, you know, that that, that is the thing when you are an immigrant, when you are any outsider coming in, you know, you may have learned something that, yeah. And she gets on stage, starts using the powers. Also really loved when she, like, f falls over and you see all these, like, figures around her. That was really... Okay, but, yeah. All right, well, good luck following that, everybody. <laughs> and finally, Zoe starts being nice to Kamala. Okay, so obviously Kamala didn't mean to knock off the giant Ant-Man head, but in her defense, how was she supposed to know that it was the first part of a Rube Goldberg machine? And I've seen a, um, apparently the, the directors thought of it as like, a, you know, Indiana Jones thing, which I can totally see. And despite their issues, Kamala saves Zoe, because that's what heroes do. Kamala comes home late, her mother was waiting up for her. And again, we get the little, you know, she writes out she was supposed to be home by this time, crosses it out, writes when she's actually home, and it's like, oh, oh, that's not, that's not good. And mid credit scene, damage control is going to bring Kamala in, or at least try to. Now we know why they got brought up, brought back up in the last Spider-Man movie, since they really didn't make any difference in there. I, yeah, it was it was kind of a twofer. Okay, damage control, they'll they'll be relevant soon enough. Daredevil, you know, so that was basically because because you could literally cut that out, and you'd be fine. It it changes nothing. I think this might be the most emotionally resonant Disney Plus MCU show pilot for me so far. I appreciate that Kamala doesn't quip the way most MCU heroes do, and in general, in some ways, this really doesn't feel that much like an MCU show. I will grant when she, you know, drags over Amir and does the, you know, that's very MCU, but it is also very Kamala. It, it has very strong, like frustrated teenager vibes, you know. When I was a teenager, I wouldn't have done exactly that, and not just because my older siblings are significantly older and did not still live at home when I was a teenager, but I wanted to. I would have won If I had thought of it, I would have wanted to. There you go. Matt Lintz, who plays Bruno, is actually... I, I knew he looked familiar. He's in the the second Piranha 3... You know, the Piranha 3 Double D movie. He's the, the freckled child that... The Hoff is not that big of a fan of. And he's in Halloween 2, obviously the more recent one, because I'm pretty sure he wasn't born by, th or only barely born by the time the first one was, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm i glad to see him again. I, I, I will admit, the, for the when I looked him up, the reason was that I was thinking, is he related to Alex D. Linz of Home Alone 3? But apparently not. The leads in this are very charismatic, especially Amon, including in interviews and such. I don't think only people who are fans of these characters should get to play them, but it is still really cool when that happens. And in multiple interviews, Iman talks about how much the character means to her, which is really cool. Like others, I don't love that they changed the powers away from the Mr. Fantastic, <laughs> Mr. Fantastic style rubber powers, but I really appreciate it that they appreciate that they did keep it. Stuff that she can get creative with, since she's such a creative person. We didn't see a lot of creative creativity in this episode, but she did only just get her powers. I'm sure we will down the line. And as others have pointed out, those bands might be Kree, so good way to connect her to Captain Marvel. And I, I don't hate the Inhumans. Neither, you know, not the not the comic book characters, not the limited mini series, but I haven't watched it yet, so maybe I will one day. I really don't think we're gonna get the whole, like, Terrigen Mist thing. I, I think it was wise to go away from that. But it they don't have to, you know, that doesn't mean that they have to get away from the, the rubber powers. And, you know, some people have pointed out 
the fact that Kamala makes giant hands is an expression of her goofy sense of humor, and that's kind of lost here. Yeah, that's that's really too bad. The actor playing the mother speaks very frankly in multiple separate interviews about how unfairly negatively Muslims have been viewed in America, especially after 9-11, and that she wants the show to help normalize Muslims. I think the show is doing a great job so far. Like, the, these really are, like, you know, okay, maybe maybe they speak a different language and look a little different than your mom and dad, but that those are, you know... That's a mother, father, and older brother right there. Like, you you cannot claim. I, I refuse to believe that anybody watched that scene and didn't at all recognize, okay, these are a mother, father, and older brother. I don't need, again, like, I have, like, three older brothers. <laughs> I didn't have trouble remembering that. I just wasn't sure if I was going to reference all three of them. I have three older brothers, and th once again, they're all they're older than me. You know, they they when they started having children, I was old enough to play with the children they had. You know, so the the I've never had that exact experience, but even I can reckon. Just like if you've watched an American movie with you know multiple siblings like even even when they're adult sometimes the the dynamic hasn't changed that much you know it's just yeah those are those are definitely that's a mother that's a father that's an older brother and apparently i, I watched the interview apparently like the the actor who plays the older brother has an older brother himself he doesn't have a younger sister he does have a younger brother and iman also has an older brother. So, and and he said she made it super easy for him to be the older brother. And, and it, it, like, whole, it feels like these are two people who have been siblings since they were, you know, since the younger one was born. Like, literally, these, they have such, yeah, yeah. I loved that Nakia apparently bet that she would fail driving says and she's like I, she says something like i still love you or something like that but just yeah you know and it, it is kind of like bruno he thinks the world of her so he was certain she was going to pass but nakia has a bit more re realist realistic you know i also i saw at least one person say there was too little nakia i definitely i'm looking forward to seeing more uh, I'd, I'd be very surprised if there keeps being this little Nakia in, in future. They had to fit a lot into this pilot. So, you know, but yeah, you know, you get this. It's, it just, yeah, the relationship is slightly different. She doesn't have the exact same relationship with these two. You know, they're, they're her two best friends, but she doesn't have the exact same relationship with them. But yeah, that is absolutely everything I had. I can't wait for next episode. This is already lining up to be one of my favorite MCU Disney Plus shows. You know, uh, I don't... It's not quite fair to compare it to WandaVision. Because WandaVision's pilot is a very different thing than this pilot. And trying to do very different things. I guess... Ultimately, I think right now they're tied. You know, I, I really, I, no notes. I have, I have almost nothing to criticize about this at all. Like with the WandaVision pilot, I, you know, even, even with the, the Moon Knight, there was a little bit that I, I'm struggling to recall it right now, but there was some stuff that I think it might have been like CG, some of the, some of the time. It didn't completely look like Khonshu was really that. And that's also actually, yes. I recommend watching the videos that Sean Chandler Talks Movies has done on this. One thing I wanted to also mention, in case you don't watch his, he points out that the CG really does not kind of gel with the rest like it stands out you can tell okay i am looking at cg and not just because like you know okay obviously they're not going to do that 
you know, she, her superpowers, they couldn't do it practically. But the CG is distractingly, like, yeah. I, I, I hope that they can do something about that in, in future. I mean, certainly the CG in Moon Knight also wasn't exactly the same quality in the different episodes. So, yeah, anyway, absolutely love this. Cannot wait to see more of it.